Hey, all you long riders, welcome back to Everything Fly Fishing. Today, we're going to learn how to mix our own dubbing, how to tie a Hendrix and Emerger, and a lot more information at the end of this video. So make sure you stay. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe right down here so you don't miss any videos that are exclusive to this channel. You might not, you will not find them anywhere else. So, so. Make sure you subscribe right down here. And like, comment, and share this video with all your friends. Please. Okay. Okay. Without any further ado, we are going to take you to the vice and tell you how to tie a Hendrix and Emerger. Right now. I'm going to take a size 12. It's a caddis egg hook, but it shanks a little bit thicker and it'll help the fly sink because we're not going to add no weight to it. So, um, And then by um, dry, uh, adding dubbing to, well, I'll tell you at the end of the video. But I'm going to tie on a size 12 caddis hook, debarb it. We're going to tie in some 70 black denier thread, run it all the way back and well into the bend of the hook. Oh, I'm sorry about that. We're going to run it halfway back. I forgot. And then we're going to head cement it. Let that dry. Everybody's been asking me what kind of yarn I use to, tie, to do wings and stuff. And here I'm going to show you. And, uh... I know the package says, I think tan or brown, or, but I'm using white. But I found this package so I could tell you exactly what kind of yarn we use. So there you go. We buy it at Blue Herring, by the way. What we're going to do here is we're going to tie this. Basically, we're tying a parachute post in. So we're going to tie this in. Now, you see I tied it in back. I want to show you something. You can move. You tie your thread closer to the eyelet to move your post closer to the eyelet. Because you're going to cut this off and use all that uh, tapered from the, the leftover waste material. So you can just uh, tie it forward to where you want it and then clip it off. Now, when you clip that wing off, you're going to have kind of like a sudden drop off there where your thread is. So we're going to tie in this tail and that'll make up some of that space um, and start making more of a taper. And we'll use an organza and this is going to be a trailing shuck off the back and it's a light tan organza. And I think it matched the shuck a lot better than a white organza. I think the shuck's an off color. I don't think it's the white, you know, not the ones I've seen anyway. But anyway, we're going to tie that off as a trailing shuck and then start tapering the body. What I do usually is take four strands of this organza and fold it over and over and over. So I just make a piece about an inch long. You're going to cut it down to about a quarter inch. so, And that'll give you a whole bunch of strands of it instead of pulling a whole bunch out, cutting it, and then losing them or whatever on your desk. You could just take four and just fold it over and over and then tie it in. Now we're good. Like I said, we're gonna tie this in right behind where we cut off that to help us build up a taper to where we cut off the uh, wing material. Now, like I said, we're gonna cut that organza off about a quarter, well, between a quarter and a half an inch long. Now we're going to start running our thread up and start building up the body and making that taper, a nice taper up all the way up to the wing. You 
see here, we want to move our post up a little closer to the eyelet. We just add some thread wraps behind the, up towards the eyelet a little bit, then pull it back and when we add thread ropes in front of it to get that baby to stand right up. Now you can start adding thread wraps around the post and go up. Oh, I'd say about a quarter inch up. And you're going to get, that'll make it stiffer so you can add your hackle. Now, when you're wrapping around that post and going up, I know I make it look real easy here. If you're new to tying, this could be a little aggravated. Just have patience and wrap it around. And uh, just have patience. Once you get your post up to about a quarter inch, come back down with the thread. I have to get down to the bottom post. I know you've seen that, but I was talking. But when you get down to the bottom, uh, bottom of the post, you add some thread wraps in front and then back. You're going to work on your taper real quick. Make sure that looks all good. Then run your thread back down to about the tail. And we're going to get ready to dub. Wow, I almost forgot. Uh, you got to tie in a piece of uh, dark brown thread I double it up and twist it together when I wrap it up but this is your, gonna be your ribbing Now, I'm going to show you how I made the dubbing. I took that blue dun there, which was I consider light gray, that says blue dun, and then I took a tan from this dubbing, and then I took a reddish, amberish color, a really dark red, and mixed that all together, and that's how I came up with the Hendrickson dubbing. So, that's how I did that. Once I had all these blenders, I kind of did one of these numbers and picked it and mixed it together till it was all evenly. And that's how I got my dubbing. And it looks really close to a real, to real dubbing. Now we're going to put very little dubbing on because we have a pretty nice size body taper build up. So we're just going to put it really lightly. I'm going to dub that up to right behind the wing. Now we're gonna rib this fly, and you can see it's gonna—it's really a bulky body right now. And after, and you want—oh, you want to take the ribbing the opposite direction you wrapped the uh, dubbing, because this will help make it a more solid fly. Plus, your your rib will stick out better. So you want to dub or rib this all the way up to the behind the wing, and you'll see is that the body will look bulky, because that's because it was real loose dubbed, and then when you wrap it up, it'll make the body look smaller plus I have hair sticking out we want them hair sticking out all over this is a merger now we're gonna take a done dark done feather and we're gonna strip it off we're gonna leave I'd say about a half inch so we're gonna tie this in right behind the eyelet and then we're gonna wrap that where we don't have, there's no fat part, that half inch of stripped uh, hackle, we're going to run up that post and go up with your thread, up the post to where the top of your post is. Then you're going to run your thread back down on each side of the post. So that way your hackle, hackle's sticking straight up like the post and, it's start, and it start, when you start wrapping, it'll be at the top you wrap down. Now we're going to add head cement, stiffen all that up so it's easy to wrap that hackle around. I'm going to let it dry all the way so it'll be real stiff and it'll be easy to wrap that hackle around. Now 
Now we're gonna take some ice, black ice stubbing, and we're gonna wrap that around the bottom of the post and up to right behind the eyelet. We leave the left gap there to form a head right behind the eyelet. Now we're gonna wrap that hackle, like I said, starting at top. When you get to the bottom, you have enough wraps of hackle there. You're gonna pull it towards the front of the eyelet and tie that off. Now what you're gonna do with these two fingers, you're gonna pull everything back and pinch the hackle and everything. And then you're gonna take a th your thread and wrap it right around trapping all that the hackle down now this could be a little rough you're gonna uh, pull back on everything and start the whip finish you gotta have a little patience here try not to trap any of the hackle fibers down if you trap one or two of them down it ain't no big deal whip finish it once or twice head cement it if you want to you don't have to head cement it Cut off your thread, cut off your hackle, and that wasn't so bad. That looked pretty nice. I like how these flies look. They're going to work. Trust me. You can cut off your wing. If you want to know how long to wait to make the wing, I'm pretty good at judging this, but you can take a size 12 hook. Regular size 12 hook, hang it, hold it up to the wing and cut it off. I showed you how to do that in a couple episodes, other videos before, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But anyway, that's how you tie that. We're all done. Let's take a closer look at this fly right now. Welcome to the end of the video, guys. And uh, like I was saying towards the beginning, um, you sh could put a weight on this and get that upright wing to sink a little bit, like maybe six inches below the surface if they seem that that's where they're taking the mergers at. Or you could add a uh, float coat into that upright wing. You don't really wouldn't have to. These wings float really well. I love them. Um, so much easier to tie in the calf body hair and they float like better I think better than deer hair so they really work um, these flies or you know you can put it on the body and get it to sit a bit higher depends on where you in the wild calm they seem to be taking the emergers at uh, I'm sorry about that last clip of the close-up of the fly it was a little bit not as we went back to the old webcam to shoot the close up because I'm just getting started with this new fancy cannon. Um, I didn't show you a picture of it yet, but uh, I'm going to do a review on it and the mic and everything I got. So if you're you new to YouTubing, a, that's besides the point. You can watch that video if you want to. Anyway, I got micro lenses, things that make it so I can shoot my videos really close to the vice. And I got the wrong ones because I'm new to this, you know. Yes, our videos become a lot better now that I have the Canon and uh, the shotgun mic and our fishing videos, which we, I think, are going tomorrow. And I'm here and I got all these boxes sitting around because I've been tying for you guys. And tomorrow will be our chance to get out and tie off track. I, I tied you so many flies. Now, here comes the next problem. You tie all my flies and uh, if you're nymph fishing, it's like what nymph to use. 
you know, all the nymphs are on the water. Um, maybe we can run into a dry fly hatch. I heard there's bling, blue wings olives big kind of, uh, excuse me, blue wing olives have been coming off on some of our local area water. And so I'm really hoping I run into a blue wing olive hatch tomorrow. I think we're going to go to the sock. Um, a friend of mine just said they put some lunkers in the sock this year, so we're going to go check that out. Not to mention there is big ones in there from years. We went up late last year, as you've seen the video, if you haven't, go back. You can watch all of our tying videos so that you have a problem when you get to the creek of what nymph to tie on. Go back and watch all of our videos, especially in this last series, so that you're prepared with all the mergers. Now this is the merger. Next thing we're going to do is the dry. We're going to do a really cool burnt wing, so you don't want to miss that video. Matter of fact, you don't want to miss any of our videos. Make sure you just click down in there and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our videos that you ain't going to find anywhere else. They're original to this channel. So you're going to have to click and subscribe. Now, if you have a buddy, like and share it to a buddy. You know, comment on it. Tell me uh, what you want to tell me. Um, it's amazing, though. Some of the comments I get are just... They, uh, I, since I tie my own original patterns, a lot of these, they can't bust on me about the pattern or the wing or anything like that. So they oh, you crowd the eye too much or something. So many people tie just for to make their flies look good in their box. Most likely the people that sit on the bank and wait for a fly to, or a fish to rise, they don't fish nymphs. They're so proud, they sit there looking at their boxes, look how good of a flies these look. And they don't catch matches. We, we do. We go out all day and slay them, and you'll see in our fishing videos. So make sure you don't miss them. Like I said, subscribe. And we will sh we'll show you on the water what flies we're using. And you'll be able to go back and tie these once you see how good they do. Or maybe you already have them tied, and you'll be like, hey, that's a good idea. We'll show you some techniques on the water. We might even be visiting... One of our a guy that is just new to fly fishing, he said he's just started watching my channel and he sent me an email today, said he caught his biggest fish ever, it was a 20 to 22 inch brown. Now that is awesome and just learned to fly fish. He told me the day before he didn't know how to rule cast, asked me if I could recommend some flies. So I recommended flies, he went back into the blue herring, got some flies, I can't wait to find out what he caught it on, maybe it was one of my recommendations, that would make me real happy. Just new to fly fishing, already landed his first fish. Didn't even know how to rule cast yesterday when he told me, but he must have got it together. A little more practice on that. People make great videos on how to cast. You know, you could get a hold of us. Maybe we can work out an instructional time where we could teach you how to cast. But, you know, learn to rule cast and then, boom, tie these flies up and you'll be catching fish. Big fish. No time. Trust me. Our flies work. So, that being said... Keep your lines wet, all the trees, and only give them fish a sore lip.